because we're interested in solutions. You know, why are we living with problems we can solve? There may be problems we can't solve, but you know, those we can solve, why are we not implementing the solutions which exist? And so we honored these solutions through this award, and in the course of these years, I then realized that summer wasn't enough. Some of our award recipients got so famous through this award, they became ministers in their countries, but they still felt very frustrated. And so I, I said, what is the main problem today? Well, it seems to be a sort of blockage, because politicians are too timid to implement what they what is you know realistic. They will only ca care about you know, the, the short term. This has been sort of integrated in the structures of decision making, and the long term is lost. And I realized that in that our ancestors often had institutions integrating the long term they call them in, in pre-colonial India for example they call them councils of seers into the future in Africa in North America they had other such structures and today we influence the future much more than they did much longer term but we have no lobby for future generations you know they are not represented when they're being taxed you know, in the American War of Independence they had the slogan no taxation without representation Today, future generations have seen that their very livelihoods taxed away and they have no say until now. So that's the main reason why I suggested a World Future Council. In a materially finite planet, you cannot have sustainable growth forever. I mean, you have to be either crazy or maybe an economist to, to believe that you can have that. And so the question is, what has happened with this sustainability debate? How, you know, to me, it, it's more a question of looking from the future and then sort of doing backcasting instead of forecasting and saying, now, if this is going to happen in 2050, what can happen now? And it's quite clear that if we continue this kind of life we are leading and the rest of the world is going to follow us and it's going to be the end of the biosphere. And so, you know, we are not practicing sustainability in the true sense of the word because uh, we have managed to, to dilute it. We have said, well, you know, of course we want to be sustainable, but we also want to continue business as usual. And, and then sort of somehow try to make that sustainable and then we make plans for 2030, 2100. What has happened now over the last couple of years or even months is that the future has caught up with us. You know, this, the climate chaos is such an overriding issue. It's not an environmental issue. I mean, climate chaos will make it impossible to reduce hunger, to reduce poverty. As we know, water shortages already, you know, a drought uh, emergency in northern and central Italy. In, in, in Australia, whole cities now being faced with evacuation because there's no more water and the government saying it's too expensive to send it in in, in, in tanks. The civil war in, in Sudan also because of the lack of water. These people lived together for centuries happily and uh, you know now they are being faced with these fight for ever scarcer resources. So this is why this issue is so important and suddenly it's caught up with us.